Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Brothers and sisters in Islam Welcome to my channel, The Muslim Apologist I'm your host, MNJ Today we're going to try something different uh, We're going to have a podcast So this podcast will be called TMA Talks This is the first, inshallah, of a series of many, many podcasts to come So I'm hoping that this format, this new format that I'm introducing to the channel We'll get your love and support from you, my viewers, inshallah, to um, continue supporting me in this endeavor of Muslim apologetics. So today we are we are very much honored to have a very interesting guest, um, a personal friend, someone who I've known for over two decades. Uh, his name is uh, Brother Enku Fauzi, and welcome to the show, Brother Enku Fauzi. Brother MNJ. Uh, how are you? I'm great. Alhamdulillah, brother Uncle Fozi. How are you? Oh, um, I'm cool, man. Cool. <laughs> great to have you on the show, brother Uncle Fozi. Would you like to, you know, kindly share with us um, about yourself and your involvement in comparative region and Muslim apologetics, especially in Shaw? Well, um, my background is actually secular, um, but uh, when I was at the age of 40, um, as a Muslim, I feel the um, the calling to share Islam with um, non-Muslim. And um, since the um, in my country, Malaysia, uh, we are a multi-religious uh, community, and we have um, all kind of races and creeds here. And the majority are Muslims and are Christians. Um, so uh, this is how I get involved. Uh, I'm engaging conversation with Christian friends yeah, and uh, exchanging um, belief of each other's faith and respect each other's faith. That's how I get involved. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Very noble um, aims and uh, ambitions, especially in uh, our country. Right. So, for the information of viewers, uh, both I and uh, brother Enku Fauzi uh, from Malaysia. When it comes to apologetics, of course, there is a bigger aim in order to you know spread the word of islam to the world and of course you know to um dissect and to study the issue of christianity so anyway um today's topic uh brother Enku fauzi we will be um, you know discussing about um the concept of uh, sin sin okay i believe this is your very much a favorite topic of yours right yes yes <laughs> yeah um, you are you are right. Yeah. Spot on. Spot on. Yes, right. So, um, basically, you know, as um, someone who you know, I myself, having studied Christianity for so long, but I myself am not very much clear on uh, the issue of sin in Christianity. Sometimes it confuses me because um, each uh, denomination, each sect, as you know, the Catholics, the Protestants. The Eastern Orthodox, you know, they have different views of sin sometimes. Mm. So perhaps, you know, um, let us go to the crux of the matter, right? So as you know, Christians generally, they say that Jesus, you know, the prophet Isa alayhi salam, we know him as Isa alayhi salam, but the Christians call him Jesus. Um, they say that, you know, Jesus was sent down uh, to earth, okay, uh, fully God, Fully God, but fully man, but as a man, in the form of a man, okay, to uh, basically die or to be sacrificed uh, because uh, Jesus, as we know, he was uh, crucified at the cross. But Christians take this event as something uh, theological, something significant to their belief. They say that when Jesus was crucified at the cross, it was planned and this was done as part of a sacrifice for the sins of the world. So, the first question would be, why does it have to be Jesus? Why can't it be anyone else? Why must it be Jesus, the son of Mary? And perhaps you can share with us the theological significance of why it has to be Jesus in Christian belief, in show. Um, That's a very big order. <laughs> um, I try to uh, explain um, as simple as possible um, with uh, in the context of the theology um, of the Christian faith. Um, now, uh, we have to go back to the basic, the core uh, belief of the faith. 
that that's that that is um, um the christian believe that you know all human being are, are born as sinners you know uh, why all human being are born as sinners because they say that if a human being inherited the sin of adam when adam sin in the during the during the, the creation uh, in the garden of eden and uh, all the descendants of um the adam inherited the sin so all mankind are born in the state of being sinful with a sin uh, and meaning that all men have a sin nature now um uh, christians also believe that uh, there is life after death yeah? and uh, um, and after death uh, if if you are a sinner you go to hell if if you are not a sinner you go to heaven so nobody want to go to hell so everybody want to go to heaven uh, so the big problem is that the problem of sin and uh, they have to find a solution so the solution to this sin problem yeah, is is basically um, according to the teaching of the of the church you know, um sin has to be redeemed yeah, uh, um, and this redemption of sin can only be done by offering a sacrifice to god and uh, not an ordinary sacrifice the sop yeah, the the standard operation uh, uh, procedure for this uh, 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 sin offering uh, you must sacrifice someone without sin now now this is a problem there the the the, the, the dilemma is that where can you find someone without sin when everybody has born sinners so um they 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 went to the next level of solving this problem then um the church the church teach that um god is very merciful and want to forgive humankind and um because of that god um became human being so they call it god um incarnate uh, as human being in the form of jesus christ yeah who who was born um by a virgin mary and um so so because he was born without without um, um a human father to the christian he is the son of god so jesus you know is unique in the sense that he is um, a human being as the son of god and at the same time he's also god incarnate yeah? that's why they say jesus number one is uh, a god and because god is sinless therefore being being god incarnate or the son of god he is also sinless and next point is because he is sinless therefore uh, he is eligible to become the sacrifice offering for the redemption of sin so that's why uh, only jesus uh, is eligible to die on the cross for the redemption of sin of all mankind that's the answer i see i see thank you very much uncle very uh, informative and very elucidating so um you did mention about uh, the church right are you specifically referring to the uh, catholic church or the protestant church or do all the churches believe this okay uh, this is core fundamental uh, belief of the faith and um uh, it belongs to all category all denomination of the church because uh, when christianity started uh, there's only one church it's called catholic yeah Later on, it it uh, it is it split into uh, uh, orthodoxy. It split into uh, Protestantism. But the the root of all, you know, every every denomination must believe in this redemption of sin by Jesus Christ. So basically, um, the Christian belief is that by all costs, Jesus must die at the cross, regardless whether he could be saved or regard or otherwise. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, at all costs, because. Um, uh, according to the to to the church teaching this is the plan of god for salvation you know? that's why god you know take the form man uh, uh, purposely come come to the, to to die for our sin in the name uh, in the form of jesus christ that's why we ask christian uh, why do this why did jesus christ um, come down to earth yeah he came specifically to die for our sin yeah? you can you can ask this question in a, in another a form like uh, like what is at stake if G, if jesus is not god so if Jesus is not God, therefore Jesus is not sinless. And if Jesus is not sinless, therefore Jesus is eligible to die on the cross. And if Jesus died on the cross as a sinless person, you know, then the salvation never happened. There, there was there's no redemption. So the whole Christianity uh, faith is still uh, at stake. That's it. Yes, I see. So basically, it's because they believe that Jesus was sinless. That is why he had to be the one who was sacrificed at the cross. Yeah. So um, so this theology. This this understanding of Jesus having to be sinless, 
and Jesus was the only one to be sinless, this is not compatible to Islam, right? Because we Muslims believe that all the prophets of God from Adam to Moses to Dawood to David, Sulaiman, Solomon, everyone, everyone right up to even Jesus and Muhammad himself, Salawah alayhi wa salam, they were all sinless. Is that correct? Yes, uh, but, um, the, um, in, in uh, Islamic faith, huh? uh, we believe that um, our prophets uh, are um, well, uh, appointed by God, number one. And um, it, is not, it is not godly for God, of God to appoint someone who is, who is a sinner, <laughs> and number one. Uh, and, um, um, and, and, and all, all the prophets are infallible. Infallible means uh, they do not um, um, do any sin, anything, but do, do, do not do sin. Okay? That, that, that's uh, the belief in Islam. Yes, absolutely, Uncle. Thank you very much, Uncle. So, um, so since we are talking a lot about Jesus, Alayhi Salam, so um, that goes to the uh, next question, which I think, which is an important question that um, not many people ponder upon. So, did the Gospels actually say yeah, that the blood of Jesus, Alayhi Salam, okay, will be uh, you know used for the remission of sin? Yeah. So, where is it even mentioned in the Gospels exactly? The key word here is the uh, the gospel. Uh, the 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 Bible is divided into Old Testament and New Testament, and the New Testament, the first four books of the New Testament are the gospel. What is the gospel? Uh, the gospel uh, is basically a biography of Jesus. You know uh, about his his birth, about his uh, teaching, his his practices, his his uh, um, his life. You know, and later on, um, end up with um, being crucified. And uh, respected and ascended to heaven, so uh, that is the gospel, right? a biography of Jesus. So the question here is, um, according to the biography of Jesus in the gospel, you know, um, uh, where is this teaching of the remission of sin, yeah? um, according uh, based on the blood of Jesus? Yeah? All right, um, there are four gospels in the in the New Testament, and um, in the four gospels, um, the three of the gospel narrated a story about the Last Supper. Now, why is this the Last Supper? Uh, the Last Supper is supposed to happen on the, on the night before Jesus was arrested and later on crucified. So that was the Last Supper he had. After that, he was arrested and, and then the next day he was crucified. Now, um, at, at the Last Supper, according to uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, you know, Jesus was among the, the, his 12 disciples and, um, and he, had, uh, he had break and wine, right? bread and wine. And um, when Jesus broke the bread, you know, and passed over, passed to the to the uh, to the to all disciples, uh, he said that this is my body. Uh, remember me, Comm commemorate me. Uh, this is my body. Remember me. And then when he passed over the, the water, the cup of wine for everybody to drink, and um, the, uh, the the three gospel said, "Now this is my blood. Uh, this is my blood." Of the new covenant, okay. Now, um, uh, among the among the the, the, the three gospel, Mark, Matthew, Luke, Mark, Matthew, and Luke, you know, um, <clears throat> only Matthew, only Matthew has the word, you know, for the forgiveness of sin, you know. In Mark and and Luke, you know, um, Jesus is supposed to say uh, that this is my blood of the covenant, which is uh, poured out for many, yeah. You know? So uh, the same word uh, is also narrated in um, uh, Matthew. Uh, this is my blood of the covenant, just poured out for many. But Matthew added one more sentence there for the forgiveness of sin. Okay? When it comes to Mark, uh, there's, there's, there's no forgiveness of sin. It's just that this is my blood of the covenant, which is uh, uh, poured out, out for many. Okay, so um, uh, that's one point there. Now we see that Matthew. Um, Added a new sentence there for, for the for, for the forgiveness of sin, and um, um, one more interesting point here is that you know um, normally in the red letter Bible, uh, all the words of Jesus Christ are in red letter, yeah? but uh, but when it comes to the the this Last Supper uh, narrative, yeah? um, when Jesus break the bread, you know, and Jesus said, "This is my body." All the three gospels are in that letter. But when it comes to this, this is the cup I pour for all, 
uh, and when Matthew say uh, for the forgiveness of sin, uh, all the three gospel, the letters are not in red. They are in, in, uh, not in red. And then when it's, it's not in red, when it's not in red, uh, red, uh, red letter uh, uh, verses, you know, so that is not that that is not the word of Jesus. Okay? That, that, that's one point there. Okay. Now, what about the Gospel of John? Now, in the Gospel of John, you know, um, it it is stated that Jesus, you know, Jesus said you know, that uh, um, Jesus said that uh, that the bread um, and and the and the cup of of, of wine you know, is just a commemorative. Uh, remember me. Uh, this is my body. Uh, this is um, this is my my my, my, my blood. Yeah? So um, yeah, here here we have John. Yeah? He said it. Um, John chapter six verse fifty three to uh, fifty six. Yeah? Uh, eat his eat his flesh. Yeah, he said this by body. Eat his flesh, and this is the 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 wine and drink his blood. Yeah, uh, and um, uh, whoever whoever do this, uh, remember uh, me. Remember me. And um, uh, this whoever drink and eat this will will has eternal, eternal life and will be resurrected uh, on on last day. Um, so uh, my flesh is real food. My blood is real, 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 real drink. So uh, this is what the the, the the Gospel of John said. Yeah? And um, one thing about the Gospel of John here, there's no there's no mention of covenant. There's no covenant there. Okay. Now um, I want because your question is uh, focused on the gospel. Um, I have to add here something that is outside the gospel. You see, the gospel were written. Um, uh, between six, uh, between seventy uh, CE, two hundred uh, CE, and um, and this narration on the on the on the blood um, on the last supper eh, on the last supper, yeah, um, were written between those period. Okay? Now, uh, before the gospel were written, yeah, uh, we have the letters of Paul. We call it epistle. Now, now Paul uh, uh, wrote letters. Um, between the between the year forty CE to the year sixty seven CE, because in the year sixty seven CE he died, yeah. And uh, among the letters we have the the one uh, one interesting um, narrative is in uh, one Corinth Corinthian chapter eleven verse twenty three to twenty six, yeah, where Paul uh, wrote in his epistle before the gospel were written, before the gospel were written, yeah. Um, why? Why I, I focus on this because there's a possibility that the gospel uh, uh, was influenced by later Paul on the story of the Last Supper. Okay, so uh, here we have um, the the First Corinthian Paul wrote um, about Jesus, saying that Jesus said, "My body, the bread and the, the body that is about the body uh, is in the context of rem remembrance." Yeah, and the cup, the cup is the new covenant. In my blood, uh, in the context of remembrance, okay, remembrance, and um, and then wh whoever drink uh, the cup and eat the bread, you know, for remembrance, you no, know, they are proclaiming the the the, the Lord's death until he come again. Uh, that that's the, the the context of the Last Supper um, in in Letter of Paul. Now, one interesting point here about Letter of Paul and the the Last Supper is that. Paul in his life yeah, never met Jesus yeah, while Jesus was on earth. How did Paul, you know, uh, know about Last Supper or whatever Jesus said? You know, um, according to one Corinthians chapter eleven, um, before verse twenty-three, uh, prior to this, in the context that uh, Paul said that you know, the, uh, the the Lord the Lord told him, the Lord Jesus told him. Um, we remember in the book of Acts that uh, Paul uh, supposed to meet Jesus yeah, on the road to Damascus yeah, as, as a vision. Yeah? And there's no mention about Last Supper there. And um, and after that, you know, that, that there's no more Jesus and Paul receiving liberation yeah, or any vision at all. So here, how does the, uh, Paul, who never met Jesus, yeah, and um, and and has no more vision um, uh, uh, apparition or vision uh, uh, contact anymore. Has this last supper narration in this epistle? This is is, is a mystery. Uh, so um, 
that's how you know the connection between the remission of sin uh, through the to the blood of Jesus Christ uh, are in the gospel. I forgot to give the gospel uh, reference here. Uh, the gospel here is a uh, Luke chapter twenty two verse nineteen and twenty. Um, Mark chapter fourteen verse twenty two to twenty four, and uh, Matthew chapter twenty six verse twenty six to twenty eight, and uh, we have John John chapter six verse twenty three to fifty six. So you can find that, and and just now one Corinthian uh, chapter eleven, uh, verse twenty three to twenty six. That's it. Wow, that's a lot of references and very lengthy but. Uh, very uh, enlightening explanation, Uncle Brother Uncle Fauzi. Yeah, so yeah, I think I think the audience. I hope that the audience, uh, you know, uh, is enjoying the uh, the uh, your your very wise and very uh, detailed explanation. I don't think many Muslims, you know, have the capability to you know to dissect you know the Christian theology to such detail and accuracy as you have done. Say, so um, since we again um. We are talking on the subject. We, you touched on the subject of Paul, and you know Paul claiming that he has seen Jesus, and you know making making claims that that cannot be found anywhere except him saying that he came from the Lord. Yeah, meaning Jesus here. So, what actually did Jesus say about sin? I mean, did he actually, uh, you know, say anything directly about sin? You know, and uh, in relation to you know to to mankind, or you know, in relation in relation to God, especially. Um, well, that's a very good question there. Very incisive. Now, um, if you're talking about Jesus uh, died for our sin and his blood, uh, his remission for our sin, uh, now, um, are those teaching uh, taught by Jesus? And if so, what did Jesus teach? So that, 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 that's the, the, the essence of the question, right? So uh, I, I noted four areas yeah, um, in the gospel um, about sin and what Jesus teaches about sin. So, um, Jesus thought about sin. Number one, Jesus said sin begins in the heart. That's Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. You know? For out of the heart comes all the, all the thoughts. You know? If the hearts are evil, sinful, you know, you'll do sinful things. You know? And um, so, sin comes from the, from the heart. Yeah? And uh, number two, Jesus uh, thought that um, the Holy Spirit you know, uh, convicts us of our sin. What does it mean here? You know? It means that um, Jesus... Uh, uh, before he left, you know, he left, uh, Earth, he left uh, Mother Earth. Yeah. Um, he told his uh, disciple that uh, uh, when I go away, the Comforter will come. And to the Christian and the church, the Comforter is Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, yeah. meaning that after Jesus left the Earth, you know, the Holy Spirit you know, ascend down to look after us. Okay. So this Holy Spirit you know, uh, or the Comforter, uh, uh, we 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 prove to the world, you know. Um, that the world has the wrong concept of sin and righteousness. Uh, so that's why you say Holy Spirit will come and convict us of our sin. So Holy, Holy Spirit will come, you know, and uh, uh, educate us yeah, and and guide us, you know, to the true righteousness uh, that uh, we, uh, we 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 misunderstood. You know, uh, that is the number two. Number three, Jesus thought that um, we must forgive those who sin against against us. Now. Um, what does it mean that now? Do you remember the Lord's Supper? One of the one of the verses in Matthew chapter six verse fourteen to fifteen in the Lord's Supper. And Lord's Supper, um, um, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know. So in in verse uh, the Lord's in prayer, verse, the Lord's prayer, uncle. Oh, the Lord's. Oh, sorry, the Lord's prayer. <laughs> the, Lord's prayer. Supper, yeah, yeah, the Lord's prayer. Yeah, the Lord's prayer. I think because Lord's... you you were talking about a lot about the Lord's Supper, and I got carried to the Lord the Lord's prayer. You suddenly call it the Lord's Supper. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I must be going old, and then uh, maybe I need to, I need to, I need to <laughs> no, do my it, ha it happens. It happens. Yeah, yeah. lots prayer. Yeah, you're referring yeah. to the lots prayer. Okay, anyway, yeah. continue. Continue. Yeah. continue. Uh, yeah. uh, thank, thank you for co correcting me, brother uh, MNJ. So, um, in Matthew chapter six, it was fourteen fifteen. Uh, within the the lots prayer, um, Jesus uh, teach uh, or taught um, his disciple how to pray, and among the wording is you know, uh, Lord. Uh, um, the, the, the Lord will forgive us, uh, or, or the Father will forgive us. He, he will forgive others. So, the, so also in uh, in in um, in John, uh, in in John chapter twenty verse twenty three, after his resurrection, uh, again, again Jesus told the disciple, uh, if you forgive others their sin, their sin are forgiven. 
but it might the lord prayer if you forgive others the sin uh, your, uh, the, uh, the, the father will also forgive your sin so here two things two things are important here number one is about uh, what Jesus talked about sin that sin can be forgiven number two uh, sin can be, can be forgiven if you forgive others you know I repeat here according to Jesus the lord's prayer sin can be forgiven by God uh, your sin can be forgiven by God, by God. If you, your sin can be forgiven by God if you forgive others meaning what meaning what meaning um you know you, you not have to sacrifice anyone uh, for redemption of sin you, know? you just forgive others and God will forgive you that's what you mean yeah that and sounds so thing, much like Islam Uncle. that sounds so much like Islam yeah yeah because Jesus is Islam he is a Muslim <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, uh, brother Uncle Fozzi, yes, that's right, because we believe, yeah. we as Muslims, we believe that, you know, Jesus was a Muslim prophet, uh, yes. the Messiah, Al-Masih, he was yes. born of a Virgin Mary, and um, he came to uh, to preach to the children of Israel, to bring them to the right way, and to tell them of a coming of the last messenger whom he calls by the name Ahmad, so these are the attributes of Jesus as we know, as we as Muslims know, uh, you know, according to the Quran, and you know, it's, it's sometimes strange, you know, when Christians, you know, uh, tell me, especially because you know, I've been involved in apologetics. Sometimes they say, Oh, you need Jesus in your life, you don't believe in Jesus, you are a sinner, you please repent, go back to Jesus. But I, as a Muslim, I already believe in Jesus, so why do I need to go back to Jesus when I already know who Jesus was? Yeah, the, the, you, you, you are right, uh, spot on because, um, well, sometimes, um. Christian, they are just sincere when they ask this question. Yeah, somebody asked me, have you found God? You know, um, uh, as if the Muslims haven't found God. <laughs> so, um, it's, uh, we, we, we feel it funny, you know. Like, for example, they asked me a question, like, um, the first time I went to the Christian bookstore, uh, when I was about to pay, they thought I was a Christian because uh, 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 why Muslim would be in the Muslim, in the Muslim, in a Christian bookstore, right? Uh, so, they, they thought I was a Christian. They asked me, which church you come from? <laughs> So we as a Muslim, you know, this is a funny question. You know? Nobody asks any Muslim, oh, where, which mosque you come from? So this is why it's important to engage, you know, um, to interact uh, with other faiths so that we can understand each other. And, uh, you know, when, 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 they, when, when they say the statement, so we know where they're coming from. Uh, so uh, uh, likewise, they also have to understand us. Yeah? Okay, uh, the fourth, the fourth uh, teaching of Jesus uh, about sin in the gospel, this is the last one. Okay? So we go back to Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. Which, which the uh, alleged that Jesus taught uh, uh, his disciple that his blood uh, through the cup of wine on the, on the last supper, last supper uh, makes it possible for us to be forgiven of our sin. Uh, so this is the four four areas uh, uh, about sin taught by Jesus yeah, um, in the gospel. That's all. All right, thank you, Uncle. Yes, um, yeah, I'm not surprised that you know Christians. Um, they sometimes they don't understand the the Muslim uh, approach, you know, to Christianity and even to Judaism. They think that um, we we focus only on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi But the thing is, the Prophet Muhammad uh, brought the message of the Quran, which tells us about the prophets of the past. So this includes Adam and the Israelite prophets, and that also uh, means that Jesus is included as well. You see, so um, going back to on that note, yeah, so. Um, how we can Muslims yeah, can um, teach the Christians or can share with the Christians um, about you know sin, about sin in general, and you know what Jesus actually actually taught about sin. Okay, um, like I said in the beginning, you know, uh, how I get involved with this um, engagement uh, with other faiths because I want to share Islam uh, with other faiths, and um, when it comes to sharing Islam with the Christian. Um, and um, when when it comes to say Islam, we we cannot miss the uh, talking about sin. Yeah, we cannot miss talking about sin. So that's the right question there. How do we share um, the concept of sin um, from the Islamic perspective yeah, to the Christian? Yeah? All right. So um, I see here we have uh, three uh, three points, yeah, three way of approach. Yeah. Number one, uh, we have to define yeah, uh, find the common terms uh, with them. Uh, define sin. Otherwise, uh, you know, they were talking about sin from a different perspective, and we are talking about sin from a different perspective. So, um, from the common perspective of uh, theology, meaning that uh, as far as our relationship with God is concerned, yeah, in Islam and in Christianity, um, we agreed, uh, we agreed uh, in, in most of the engagement with the Christian, uh, we simply agreed you know, that sin is 
simply disobey God. As simple as that. Sin, disobey God. Finish. Uh, so if you disobey God, you are, you are, you are a sinner. Uh, you, you are sinful uh, to God. Uh, you disobey his, his rule, commandment, or whatever, it is, and law. Uh, all right, that's one. So, so now, once established this, uh, this, uh, this, this premise, uh, so we can move forward, expand to the next point. Okay? So the next point is, we share the, the attribute of sin in Islam. You see? If in Christianity, the attribute of sin is that uh, sin will uh, separate you uh, from God, you know, sin will cause you death, uh, sin will get uh, you inherited you know, um, um, at birth. Um, so that's why you need this uh, remission of sin, yeah? end up with that see, a remission of sin, uh, the blood of Christ on the cross. Uh, but in uh, in Islam, you know, the attribute of sin is very simple, you know? not, that, not that sophisticated. Number one, sin is not inherited. Number one. Number one. Yeah? Number two, nobody, nobody is burdened or carry somebody else's sin. You are responsible for, for your own, uh, you are accountable for your own deeds. Yeah? So we, we are not accountable for anybody else's deeds. Uh, therefore, if anybody uh, commits sin, uh, our father, our grandfather, uh, or our son, uh, somebody else, uh, we don't carry that sin. That is clear in Islam. Okay? And um, uh, num number three, Islam focuses on the, on, on the cost. On the cost yeah, uh, of the sin of Adam, uh, on on the cost rather than um, um, on 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 the on the consequences. Being that yeah, Islam focus on why Adam sin, what makes Adam sin? Because when when God commanded Adam uh, not to eat the forbidden fruit, you know, Adam did not eat. And then when God turned around or after God said, "Thou shall not eat of that fruit," yeah, immediately Adam eat. Uh, so Adam did not yeah, until until the serpent came came into the picture. Anti temptation came to the picture. So in Islam, uh, we have we have to focus on the cause, and we have to we have to re remedy the cause instead of remedy the, the symptom, the consequences. Yeah. yeah. So this is in Islam compared to in in, in city, uh, they focus on the consequences of sin. Uh, uh, so so the 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 remedy is on the symptom and on the cause. So that's where they get divide they get schism and the great uh, path the different path to 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 paradise yeah, or salvation. Between Islam and Christianity, so in Islam we don't need any more uh, remission of sin to the blood. No need because in Islam, you know, sin can be can be forgiven by God if you, if you seek forgiveness. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so uh, that is point number two actually. So point number two is how to remove the sin. Yeah, in Islam, uh, um, the power of forgiveness of God is important. Yeah. Uh, and God, uh, which we call Allah Islam, is all merciful. All merciful and uh, all just and wise, you know. Now, um, uh, the the natural law in Islam, natural law is like that, you know. You know um, now you are only um, guilty. Uh, you um, uh, you only you are innocent until proven guilty. That natural law number one. You are innocent until you are proven guilty. You, know? you cannot uh, you cannot commit you cannot commit someone who is who is innocent. You, know? you cannot commit or punish someone who is innocent. You, know, they, you are only uh, uh, you are innocent until you are proven guilty. Number one. Number two. You know, uh, you are you are punished. You know, once you are found guilty, you cannot punish someone who is not found guilty. That, that's a natural law in Islam. Uh, uh, but the nature of law in in Christianity is different. Jesus is innocent, sinless, uh, and he is punished uh, for somebody else's sin, Adam's sin. Uh, and 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 the and, and the, the, the the guilty party is Adam, but um, the innocent party uh, uh, is punished. And um, there was never there was never any justice in the form of uh, any 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 court of law uh, to prove that you know who is innocent who is guilty. They just catch him and you know and and crucify him. And um, doing that, um, I don't know whether uh, eating the fruit uh, is is um, is uh, a greater sin than killing God on the cross. <laughs> in the form of Jesus, which is, you know, you know, you, yeah, that's you, one of the that's one of the bitter ironies of Christianity. You see, so they're so concerned about the uh, inheritance of sin, the the, the the original sin from Adam and Salam to the point that you know they 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 are not bothered about the consequences of crucifying God. You see, so they just want to you know they they believe that you know by by killing a sinless man or killing God uh, in the form of of a man according to Christian theology, it saves them from it saves them from sin and it gives them salvation that is essentially what christianity is all about won't you agree with me yes um 
I agree with you. Yeah, very much agree with you. Exactly. Very, very, very true. That's very, very true. Because of, uh, so, um, because we touched about about Adam, but uh, unfortunately, this is not a topic of our discussion because um, oh, yeah, sorry. yes, I don't know. It's okay. No, I mean, no. I was going to say that um, we should actually have another conversation again about Adam and original sin. So, just to touch a bit on Adam, because actually the role of Adam in Christian theology is actually quite important, even though Christians uh, don't realize it. Is that you know he was responsible for, or they blame him for. Uh, you know, the inheritance of sin. But in Islam, of course, it's totally different, right? We believe that Adam alayhi salam was the first man. He was the created by God. He was the chosen as the 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 vicegerent, right? But the, the term is vicegerent in the Quran, you know, to to you know to um, lead the world to a better future. But of course, unfortunately, he um, he slipped into a mistake. We we consider we Muslims we consider it to be a mistake, but God forgave him for this mistake. So, for me, this is a very beautiful thing because he doesn't blame. Adam for you know doesn't punish Adam's uh, descendants for for his mistake. In fact, God forgave him and God gave him uh, more bounty afterwards. Even though, of course, he he and his wife uh, Hawa or Eve uh, in the Bible um, was sent down to earth. Yeah. So um, basically, our view of Adam alayhi salam is totally different, right, from the Christian belief. What would you say to that, brother Uncle Fozi? Yes, exactly. Um, I think we need to have another another session. On uh, Adam and the and and the sin of Adam, and the consequences on the theology of uh, of both of both uh, religion, Islam and Christianity. Yeah. Yes, it's, of course. It's, it's course. A, so, yeah. yes, it's a very huge topic. I understand that. I, I know you why you had to touch on him because he's a very important uh, figure in Christianity. Yeah. So yes, because they, without without Adam and sin, there's no Christianity. Exactly, exactly. Even though you know Christians, they say that they believe in Jesus. Jesus died for the sins of the world. But if Adam did not commit the so-called sin and cause the down, uh, cause him to be cast up from heaven, or so the Christians say, there won't be any Christianity. Is that correct? Right, because uh, if you only read the, the, their Bible, uh, Romans chapter five verse twelve, that's how it started. Uh, Paul, you know, um, um, propagated um, the, the theology of uh, original sin or infant sin, saying that. Um, uh, we we uh, uh, sin causes death uh, in in Romans chapter six verse twenty three the verse of sin death and then uh, because everybody there everybody everybody every human being die therefore every every human being is a sinner uh, and where does this sinner come from uh, this sin come from uh, from Adam so roughly yeah. that's the, the, the rational now um 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 according to this um, um removing of sin yeah, like I say you know in Islam Allah the the all forgiving all forgiving yeah? Yeah. we forgive uh, human sin uh, upon the human repent and seek forgiveness from him adam uh, seek forgiveness from uh, allah uh, from allah and uh, re repented and adam was forgiven uh, but the adam sorry i got to touch adam again but, this, but the adam in the bible never seek forgiveness <laughs> there's a mystery there okay yes, and, the, the last, yes. and, and, and the last point on this uh, uh and this uh, removing of sin in islam yeah it's actually the, the, the last point here. No, there is no need for sacrifice at all. You just you know, repent and and mm. uh, and then uh, don't do it anymore and seek forgiveness. Yes, no, it's that, it's that easy in Islam. You don't need to actually. God doesn't need to actually, you know, send His only begotten Son to 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 Earth and you know to uh, go through the process of being crucified and then you know the blood has to you know for the remission of sin and you know. Um, and and you know the whole uh, shebang about Christianity, the Christian theology in general. Right? So it's just we just seek forgiveness from all of Almighty uh, God Almighty, and He will forgive us. That easy. It's like that because He's God. It's His prerogative to forgive sin. Isn't that correct? Correct, because uh, like you say, uh, it's easy in Islam. Uh, as easy as as easy as Allah is one. That's it. End of story. Allah is one. Full stop. You know. Yes. How could how could you want to 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 sell a, a promote a religion, a market a religion, a faith? They're so complicated. You know. Yes. You know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Not everybody is supporting having this public mind. Yes. It's correct. People think Allah is one. So so it's a forgiveness. Allah forgive you repent. Allah yes. Forgive. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. That's right. In Islam, yeah. Yes. Of course. It's that simple. Actually. So um. Let us conclude the show because um, I think we have uh, discussed quite a lot of heavy topics tonight. So um, I believe anyway, the audience um, uh, might be feeling a bit exhausted after being bombarded with all these theological concepts and you know ideas, uh, probably opening their minds to you know their third eye to something that they have probably never thought of before. So anyway, um, 
uh, what do you think, Brother Engku Fauzi, the takeaway that we can, you know, we can uh, get from all of this, you know, in studying Christian theology, especially especially uh, regarding uh, the Christian concept of sin and you compare it with the Islamic concept of sin? Okay, before I go to this conclusion, uh, I, 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 I must share this part on the on the, on the Lord's Supper again because it, it relates to the remission of sin by the blood of Jesus. Now, the, the keyword in the Lord's Supper, uh, which, are, which is not red letter, is black, black letter, is the covenant. This is my new covenant. Okay? Now, why should Jesus talk about new covenant? You know? When Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, chapter 5, verse 17, that I come not to destroy the law you know, or the prophet. So, why would he come with the new covenant? Number one. Number two, if the New Testament, that's why they have New Testament of Testament, if the New Testament uh, has a new covenant uh, to this, uh, to this uh, blood of Jesus, you know? so, uh, and it is God, so um, the Old Testament uh, covenant um, come from a different God? That's a, that's a question. Yeah. Does God change his mind? So this is the, 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 you know, the theology about the Lord's the Lord Supper here. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I want to conclude on the what takeaway we can uh, from the lesson of tonight. So basically, uh, um, Christianity is a sin-centered place. Uh, you remove the sin, there's no Jesus there. Yeah, that's one. Eh? Number two, uh, Christianity focuses on the consequences rather than on the cause of sin. So when you when you remedy the symptom rather than the, the cause, uh, you are not uh, uh, actually uh, 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 make the right treatment. No? You you must treat the cause rather than the, the, the symptom. Yeah? Okay, so that the different in Islam. And then um, next is um, um, the most uh, glaring part of Christianity is that the power of sin is so powerful uh, that even God has to die on the cross. And God even cannot forgive, simply forgive by repenting. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, whereas in Islam, you know, God are almost full uh, and forgiving. It just depends, and God will simply forgive. So the power of forgiving of God and of Allah in Islam uh, is greater than the power of sin. In Islam, okay. In fact, in fact, the, the first teaching of Jesus uh, after he, uh, after he was uh, tempted, Jesus was got tempted by the devil. Uh, the first teaching after he was tempted, he said that depend. For the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is near. Depend. Uh, so that's, I forgot about that last teaching. Um, no, no, that's about repentance, not about sin. Repent. Uh, 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 Jesus, the first teaching. You come all the way from heaven uh, to give the greatest uh, news. You know, the good news is that, you know, um, you know, repent. For the, for, the, for the kingdom of heaven is near. That's the good news. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Uncle Fauzi, brother Uncle Fauzi. So, um, uh, thank you very much for the conclusion of this uh, topic. Alhamdulillah, I think we have reached the end of the uh, podcast, the show. So, um, my view to my viewers, uh, Alhamdulillah, thank you very much for uh, watching this video. If you like this video or you like my channel, please do not forget to like this video if you would like to subscribe to this channel please do not forget to subscribe to the button below inshallah we'll see each other again in the future assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh